The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 31, Nasdaq's down 11, S&P's a flat, gold contract down $13.80 trading at 1300 even a whack gold early in the morning out here. We get silver down 21 cents, $15.03 an ounce, and light sweet crude off 58 cents, $64 flat, notes and bonds. You get the 10-year note uh, down 6 ticks, 123.19. 30-year bond off 12 at 147.27. And King Dollar, King Dollar up 127 ticks, 96.685. The euro is at 112 to 1 U.S. dollar. The yen is out here at 111.5. And, and the pound is at 130 to 1 U.S. dollar. And uh, you think they did that Halloween thing just to... Uh, get all dressed up over in the UK and uh, <laughs> they got the extension to Halloween. It's like, really? October. That's oh right. God. We'll see what happens. I'm telling you. Totally. And then you got Bed, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, folks. Okay, this is something else. Bed Bath & Beyond came out last night and I was on the air when it actually came out and that baby uh, had closed last night at 1950. It was trading 21 for about five minutes and then all of a sudden it tanked. Okay. I mean tanked. Now it's trading at 1750. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, when I brought it up after this, it's, oh my God, hold it. This is up. No, it's not up. It's okay. down two bucks. Let's go over to my man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, you want to understand option, option strategies, future, outstanding program, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't test driven yet, the Think or Swim platform, real easy to do. Hit the banner right on TFNN. They'll allow you to trade with paper money, bring up the platform, up, absolutely outstanding platform. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Now, I have an interesting tidbit for you guys about Bed Bath & Beyond. If you watched our show yesterday, Landon Swan from Like Folio came on our show and talked about Bed Bath & Beyond and talked about negative sentiment in Bed Bath & Beyond, and he thought there was a chance for a down move off of earnings. And so wow. uh, a tip of the hat to if you watch our show oh, on a cool. daily basis, yeah, they gave you an indication that there was weak social media data coming out on Bed Bath & Beyond, and sure enough, down 9.8%. And I'll tell you, you know, I, I'm sure you just heard me when I was saying it. When they came yep. out, bottom line, it was up about a point and a half. We got it up there. 21.27 was the spike high. Oh, yeah. cool. right. I, and it's like, whoa. And then all of a sudden, wait, is, it, is that a five minute we're looking at? Uh, yes, it is. Five yeah, minutes. So, and so I, it was very I went, short lived. It was. <laughs> and as I went back into it, I hold it. Is this right? Yeah. And then, of course, coming in this morning, I heard. Yeah. And you know what's interesting, Kevin, is that. This has been on a down trip for a, for a long period of time, and, and you know, it's, we'll see if uh, they can get off these lows. I mean, they get off the lows slightly, but the rea reality is, is that you're going to need a lot more juice than this. I think the stock went from 80 to 10. Okay, well, let's right. keep going. Right. That, that, that is a company that it's, it just feels like, and the like folio data showed that, you know, they are under attack from their competitors, mostly Amazon and things like that. And they're, it's showing some wear and tear on their earnings and this stock as well. Yeah. And, you know, those big box stores, folks, if you've been into one of those, that's big rent, man. That's per square foot. When you start talking about that, you're going to pay those bills every month. Definitely. Man, you know, what's, what's a pillow take up? A pillow takes up you right. know, a couple feet. Yes. Like, really? Right. You know? <laughs> but here's the good news, guys. We've made it. We've made it to earnings season. I, uh, today, I starting today, we can st we, we we can trade the banks yep. in anticipation of earnings before the open tomorrow. So that's what we'll be talking about today. We're going to talk about J.P. Morgan. We're talking about Wells Fargo. Now today, like Folio is going to talk about Spotify and how Apple Music and Spotify compare. So if you want to 
tune in and see how those two compare to each other. Just like yesterday, we had a comparison of Netflix okay. and Apple in terms of streaming. Today, we're going to compare Apple Music and Spotify. So we're, t we're, we're basically talking about what Apple does, all the different sections, and yeah. who their main competitor is. That's so cool. Now, the, the way that is, is called the... the People that you had on, is it called Light, light, light Portfolio? Light Folio, L-I-K-E-F-O-L-I-O. -E oh, cool. And so yeah. do they use the social media aspect just to get a, a, a glimpse as to what everyone's thinking at the same time? Yes, and great question, Tom, because tomorrow, Friday, Landon Swan is going to be in studio, and his number one job is to explain to everyone exactly how they get their data, yeah. how they interpret it, and what they do with it. It's a brand and he's going to be in man. studio to get to do that. How cool is that, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and there, the accuracy of this data is staggering, Tom. Yeah. Now, it, it doesn't fit to every single stock because you have to have a stock who is active on social media and has yes. a social media following, right? So, But the names that they do cover, it's incredible how accurate they are. Now, you know what's so great, man? I mean, I've always found that I, I call them cult stocks. But cult stocks are pretty cool because once you get a, an understanding of how they like to trade, that's that's how they like to trade. It's just like okay, yep. it's you know, and and grabbing that information, we know that it's all about information and what the perception is of uh, people at any one time. I mean, because well, just look at the banks, the perception. I'm looking right. at J.P. Morgan right now, right? And when you look at the market compared to what these banks are trading at, I mean, if you're a fundamentalist. What happens, folks, is that this P is only 11 and a half. Sure. Okay. So guess what? We're trading at about 16 to 17 in the S&P, and this is a bank. You know, so right. it's like, okay, so is the interest rate already baked in? Was the recession already baked in? I mean, we're going to find out. I mean, uh, we're going to find out pretty quickly. Uh, I suspect, like, how much are they basically still pumping out? Right. Right. I mean, the main things I want to look at w w with some of these banks, especially the bigger ones like J.P. Morgan and Citi, who will come out Monday and Goldman, is net interest margin. Remember, you didn't get a rate hike for the first time in nine quarters uh, this quarter, and trading revenues. Right. Remember, yeah. you had a straight up market in this first quarter, not a lot of volatility. So I'm interested to see how their trading revenues come out, and of course how their net interest margin has fared. So I'm a little worried about the bank. Going, going in. That being said, they're all beat up pretty bad already. Yeah, no, they're, you know, when, when you take a look at that, I mean, I get Goldman up here, you know, you're 202, and, um, you know, bottom line is that that brings you, I mean, you can make the case it brings you all the way, oh, man, it's pretty wild. You know, it's wild. I just brought this back. It almost brings you back to 2009. They were, they, were right. trade, they were trading at 193. Pretty low levels, and when and when the when when the when the term book value starts to come into the uh, into the discussion, Tom, yeah. that means these things are getting low, right? When they start comparing the price of the stock to the overall book value of the company, that's when you know you're getting some valuation questions. That's so true, man. Yeah, I mean. Very hey, little growth priced in, if that's what they're looking at, right? Seriously, yeah. right. If you can buy it. And remember, last quarter, Citigroup was the one who had the biggest move because they had really good trading revenues a quarter ago. So they were the biggest mover. They come out Monday. So we'll be talking about that tomorrow on the show for sure. But today, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo. You're going to love it. Folks, 45 minutes right here. Just go to YouTube, go to TFNN, great program. Kevin, you have a, a great one, safe one, and of course, uh, have a great weekend also. Look forward to speaking Thanks next Tuesday. Thanks for having Tuesday. me on, guys. Thanks, Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 33, NASDAQ down 8, 13, S&P's flat. Coming right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 53. You get the Nasdaq down seven. S&Ps right now are flat. Uh, let's get over and take a look at that gold market. So uh, this morning, folks, uh, you know, this, this, they, they hit gold and they hit it early. And it wasn't even like there was something out here, which was tr intriguing. I, I, I happen to like that when this happens in the gold market. Um, so you're going against the strength that was generated out here on the uh, 8th. As well as it has hit the high of the flow yet, 1298. Yeah, it did. Look at that. Okay, so what you have here is this. Watch how this shakes out. This is pretty cool when you when you start. If in fact this is a bottom, which I think you you have. So when you look at this on a longer basis, you have a, you have a breakout that was on January 25th. You come down hard on the 1st of March. Now picture when you come down hard. That's lots of selling. You go back up again. You come down hard again on the 28th of March, you make a bottom on the 4th, you get a sign of strength. So, in order to break down, what you have to get going, which is, and this, that's my point, you have to get going more volume than this downdraft right here on the 28th, which is a big number, you know? And we're, we're gonna get, I don't think we're gonna get close to it. It's, that's 427,000 contracts. We'll probably do about 275, maybe even 300 today. And we'll see if in fact that 1298 holds and if it holds then that's going to be a good deal for gold because if you go over to the gdx what you're also going to see is that it's the same type of setup that and because the gold equities have been actually stronger than the metal so we're coming into the uh, 42 million and you know at this point that's that gdx is not going to do 42 million the real question is going to be uh can the gdx we're down 20 cents right now can a GDX close above 
And that's the high of that day. Okay. So it's pretty cool uh, how this thing is shaking out right now. Um, natural gas, right? Yeah. We, um, so it's Thursday. We get our natural gas inventory at 1030. Let's jump over here. Uh, jump in. So we're looking at the May contract, natural gas, quite a number, trading at 268. We had a little bit of a sell-off this morning from about 271 down to 266.85, sitting at about 268.26. Uh, 1021 right now, we get the numbers in nine minutes. Jumping around real quick, checking out the 11 AMs. We could have exposure from 270. Um, not that bad a trade if you no. happen to be bearish, only because the bullish... We're 268, is that what it says? 268.2, okay, yeah. yeah. Two pennies, though, yeah. in, in natural gas. That's a big move. Right. Um, and so what's going to happen here is that, you know, if you're trading on the Nadex platform, these usually line up at five, at least five cents or ten cent intervals. So when you're sitting at 268, 267, right away you know that you're going to have to almost have a directional bias for that to be yes. a, a trade setup that might work for you. And again, the noons. So let's just take a look. Maybe... You know, since the bullish ones are going to be slightly out of the money, not slightly, even two pennies, let's just see how the bearish ones line up, maybe just to value the time on the bearish side, all right? So we get the 270 down to 250s. Here's your 11 a.m. Okay. Contract's trading at 268.2. You're able to sell it at 267.7. So about five ticks, right? So you're risking $23, which is up to 270, and your profits run all the way to 250. Yeah. That's the 11 a.m.s. The noons to see how that price difference adds for the exact same prices, 250 to 270, exposure to the downside, and this is pretty cool, one tick. Look at that. Right, one-tenth of a penny to pay for that extra hour. Right. Not bad, um, not bad at all, especially if you happen to think that, you know, that's, that you're bearish the market. Right, and you know, we're, I suspect we're in the, uh, that they're filling up the tanks now. Do you know what I mean? We, okay. had, we had a small fill build last month. Okay. You know, I mean, because it's getting warmer, right? So we'll see. But sure. You know. Now, here's a great illustration. So this one uh, is 230. You also have 40 cents. Now, realistically, there's no premium built in for the extra 20 cents going from 250 to 230. So it's really just you're paying for the two and a half hours, right? So this is your noon. That's your 11. And you're looking at the bid because that's what you're going to sell into, yeah. right? So it's perfect. We can do the comparison right there. You pay 267.7, and you can see them tick around, right? For the 11, that. there's your noon, and then there you're paying two to three more ticks for the 230. So close. Yeah, it is so close. You know, um, if you really had a directional bias, but guess what? If you are just going to make this trade, wait for the news, and pop right out of it, right. maybe you'd, you'd be better off not paying that lower value. Yeah. Right, for the premium. But right. if you really plan on holding it, you think it has a move in it, not a bad trade. As in 230, market's trading at 268.2, you're getting in at 267.5, seven ticks below the market, uh, seven tenths of a penny for quite a risk reward if you ever got something crazy happen no, when totally. that inventory drops. Let's see what we got here. Right, let's see. Let's see another one, this one. GLCO. Okay, so natural gas. Oh, there's two of them. Interesting. We're looking at this number seven, because I'm not sure seven? what the ice, okay. yeah, 268. I'm not sure the other one's trained oh, at 3890. Okay. So, oh, interesting. Yeah, we're, we're at the lower end of this uh, Yeah, 268 range. is quite a number, that's what I say, yeah. you know. It's... Okay. So it's, it's a tough one. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. This is, this is a tough one. It's yeah. like, okay, let's see, intraday, what we've done thus far. Uh, Intraday, you get the spike down. So, hey, we'll see. What, I'll go with the spike down. We'll yeah. See. Yeah, so that low today had a spike, folks, which is 2667. Okay, right at 9 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll we're going to find out early enough, aren't we? Yeah, we and, find out in six minutes. Yeah. And how about uh, what else going on in the world? How's everything going for my, Mr. Michael Evanetti oh, today? Oh, man. He's, he's, <laughs> so, uh, so these have to do it. Now, he has two sets of charges, right, going on that he's got um, the Nike f blackmail case. Yep. And then he's got the basically fraud going on in California. Right. So this has to do with the California. We'd said on the show before, I said this is going to be his this biggest is a problem. This one. Yeah, yeah right. Um, he's going to be able to argue in the Nike case 
oh, I was just being a diligent lawyer. Maybe right. you're going to say I got overzealous. Uh, I don't think that's true. I don't think that yeah. that's probably what happened. But he's going to have an argument in this one. Good luck. I'd Different, love to. I'd love yeah. to hear what he has to say in terms of, you know. So, and this was expected. I say, you know, uh, there's an article on CNBC. I think he's expected to be indicted on like 35 additional right. counts or something by a federal uh, a federal grand jury. So he was indicted today in California. Oh yeah, there it is on three dozen charges. So it's just including. Uh, stealing a client's $1.6 million settlement. So, you know, a client wins a settlement, that goes into escrow, usually yep. at a lawyer's right. establishment. Right. Uh, I say usually, because guess what? Sometimes they could just steal it, spend it, and tell the client that they haven't been paid yet, which they allege is what happened here. Yeah. And uh, then he's going to have, on top of that, if you can move down a little, okay. he's got... Uh, He's got a, a fraud charge at the bank. Yeah, so the Cali That's in the California one. case, Evanetti allegedly defrauded a bank in Mississippi. He's submitting false tax, tax returns, getting three loans over $4 million in 2014. He also misappropriated the $1.6 million settlement. And he also hasn't paid taxes since, like, 2008 <laughs> on, oh, like, man. I... Talk about ten figures of income, like ten million, eight million, maybe nine, high I, nine figures. I wonder how that happens. And then he also has the uh, income from his law firm, which I believe was upwards of like thirty-eight million dollars that they have receipts for it. Never right. paid taxes. Um, how do, how, I mean, I know it helps to be a lawyer. That's all I can guess, right? As in, if you're a lawyer, just you're just sending a... stuff back to the IRS, probably, maybe, right? And then eventually they figure out that it's fraud. Um, I'm sure. I'm he... just trying to figure out if you don't pay tax, you're you're making all this money and you don't pay tax for ten years, you know you're going to get caught. So it's like, hey, some people just are crazy. Natural gas. Stay right there. Right folks, when we come, come right back. back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, and we have two numbers here. This gets yeah, uh, pretty interesting, right? So this is 1030. We see the first headline says rose 29. Now, the median estimate was about 36, and then maybe that was like a fat finger typo, and they yeah. said, no, 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 it's 25, and then again they say it's 25. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that happen with no, two, two news flashes come across. Within a split second, Yeah, too. I mean, this isn't an old one. They, they both popped up at the same right. time. Nonetheless, both of them below the 36 that they expected, right? Yeah. So to jump back to the chart. That just might pop up by accident. Um, get a pop. As you'd expect, less than you expected. Um, so pops right, right to 270, which would have been your max loss. But one of the cool things about pulling those up is that this actually opened at 277, which those matter. Those take seven tenths of a penny, and you're capped at 270. So if you're trading this, that just opened two and a half pennies away from where you were, and you actually would be capped out at least on your loss to 270 right. if you were bearish, right. as opposed to being in the futures market where, and that wasn't that big of a miss. You know, in terms no. of, um, yeah. Let's see if they got any more action in there. So here we go. Uh, inventories in U.S. mainland rose to 1.155 trillion cubic feet in week ending April 5th. Uh, analysts had forecasted anywhere from plus 7 to plus 47. Bloomberg came in at plus 35. Median analyst estimate was being plus 36. Uh, inventories 485 billion cubic feet below the five-year average. Interesting. So I guess the five-year average then coming in at like more like 1.7, 1.6, usually trillion cubic feet, and we're at 1.15. Um, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting about that is that that's why the bulls, you know, have been bullish on this for so long because this the the. the total inventories. The are total. Low. Yeah, they have been down for a long period of time. But okay. guess what? You know, the price of gas hasn't been able to move, man. And so. it's interesting to see the inventories by region. So yeah. look at the South Central's got a lot of it. You, you're only got a total pie of 1.15. Yeah. South Central's got 523, and they were basically almost all the increase of plus 21. Right. Pacific plus 6 to 119, and uh, unchanged almost at all the others, East, Midwest, and Mountain. Yeah, I guess the Midwest is that getting a big storm today in the next couple of days. Getting, I they, saw that, they, man. They went from 70 degrees to hurricane, uh, to, excuse me, to a storm, to, to a um, snowstorm. Yeah, I think that was Colorado. That is pretty wild. Yeah. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities, and we'll see whether we get any juice uh, in this market today. Uh, yesterday, you had low volume. Oh, look at Rite Aid. Oh, <laughs> this, so what's happening here? They must have earnings. This, I see this, fourth quarter revenue. This, this is just amazing that the stock has been still alive, but guess what? It is. Um, yep, they had earnings today at 7 a.m. Not good. You got another leg coming down. Let's see what they have to say. No, I'll go up. We. It's going to be 7 a.m. I believe they came out with them. So right, yep, right there we go. Them. Yeah. So let's see. Lost from continuing operations. Well, they're expecting two cents. Looks like they got one cent. Right, adjusted loss. This so thing. I keep seeing misses on revenue. Yeah. In uh, headlines there. There you go. So so maybe even. Ah uh, no, that's going to be. But 2020, they're looking. Earnings before interest taxes deduction, uh, 500 to 560. Estimate have been the, the full top end of that. Okay. Um, it's amazing they're still alive. It really is. Yeah. Let's see right here. There we go. So fourth quarter revenue, 5.38 billion. Estimate was 5.56. That's quite a miss, man. That yeah. is 100 and. Eighty million dollars that they didn't days. take in in ninety days that they thought, um, and then you have the 2020 earnings below the estimates five to five sixty range a bit five twenty four to five eighty three. Not what you want to hear when they're missing on the revenue. Right. They're going to miss on the earnings next year. You're obviously going to miss on earnings if you're missing by almost two hundred million dollars in revenue in a quarter. Um, let's see. They see 2020 revenue. Oh yeah, miss here 21.5 to 21.9. They were looking uh, 22. 0 0.9 was uh, the estimate, going all the way up to the high end of 22 point, almost 7. Big money. Yeah. Big money. And look at this thing. Oh, so. it's tough, man. 
It's tough to find a niche in this market, as in it you either got to be a, a, a great discounter or you have to have a, a premium um, brand, product, whatever it is, right? Stop because looks like it's going back to 20 cents. Because don't get lost in the middle. Oof. As in if you're Seriously. just trying to be a mediocre, uh, that's, that's where Amazon crushes everything. They'll yeah. sell you every product you want at a fair price, supposedly, right? I'm sure they jack some prices up oh, occasionally, yeah. but um, yeah. So you had, uh, if we go over to Lyft, L-Y-F-T. Yeah, uh, what are we at, 61, 62 today? Yeah, I mean, it's 10 bucks under yep. Europe. And this is, you know, intraday, folks. This is what confirmed ABC down at 56. It broke that B point yesterday of 66.10. You know, we did, uh, what is that, uh, 26 million versus 22. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting watching how this shakes out. And Uber did file last night. Okay. Um, so what happens... As soon as you file, the, um, they're on the road now, okay? So you can expect, like, maybe 10 days. Okay. This thing's going to go public, you nice. know? Nice, yeah. Um, and the differences in the equities are pretty dramatic. I mean, they both lose a huge amount of money, but, you know, Uber's all over the world. They have Uber Eats. Yes. Lyft is still just in the United States, um, you know, so it's, it's going to be interesting watching how this... Uh, shakes out you know what i mean definitely yeah um, they're they're battling and um different companies for sure yeah and um, but there, it, there could be enough space for both of them i'm sure that's what lyft was saying when they were on their road show i'm sure that's what uber's not saying um on their road show saying yeah. we're going to take them out man we're bigger than there and on a world scale you know that's they, the big one they certainly are yeah they certainly are and you know it's changed everything i mean it's and we'll see how much more changes in transportation yep. meaning going forward uh you know even coming into work today, there's still traffic. I mean, we, we still have the snowbirds here, which is good. I want them to stay. <laughs> um, but the bottom line is that I was, th I was thinking, I was, I was listening to them at the same time, like, okay, so how many more cars are going to be on the road? There's more people, so probably more cars. But that's going to change, Definitely. right? You know what I mean? Instead of two, two or three cars, uh, one oh, car is sure. plenty. When you think about how much money you spend on a car and, and how uh, yeah. how many hours of the day it's inactive, right. that's the thing that's going to change. It you is. know, you only need a certain amount of cars when they're just running 24 hours a day, yep. um, which will, I think, where we're going to. Just no, no a matter doubt. of uh, if, not, no, when, not if, right? Yeah. It's happening, just how long. And then, uh, so Jeff Bezos, uh, he has his letter out today. I never knew he, did. he does a letter every year. Um, and so, let's see, it turns up, so he challenged the, the other retailers to Basically, stop paying fifteen dollars. Okay. Uh, and it says, why don't you do sixteen and challenge me? And then I didn't see this one about uh, Amazon's chief executive and his annual letter argued that Amazon's growth has benefited its third-party merchants. Um, this is going against the aspect of trying to break them up. I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Last month, Elizabeth Warren laid out a detailed plan for breaking up Amazon, Google, Facebook. Uh, Third-party sellers are kicking our first. Party, party but badly he's saying third party yeah i mean it's almost comical right he's saying oh man we're getting we're getting so beat by these other sellers on our site that everything's great don't even worry about us selling directly to consumers you know we get third party sellers that are on amazon doing fantastic and i'm sure they are but that's the ceo the richest man in the world arguing against regulation of his company so there you go Good idea. surprise surprise yeah. yeah best lobbyist out there no doubt dow industrials right now up 39 Nasdaq down four, S&P's flat. Tell me I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 46. You get the NASDAQ flat. S&Ps are up 2. And uh, let's go uh, XBT. Let's go see what good old Bitcoin's doing. It, you know, it lifted its head up. I was looking at it yesterday. It was like 5,600 yesterday. Oh, that was quick. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get? Yeah, we got 54.60 yesterday. Okay. 5,042 this morning. Quick $400 to the downside. Yeah, totally, man. It doesn't seem like that much. I mean, it does. It's like 8%, right? It's in staggering if you I know. look at it in the context of stocks, which is why many traders enjoyed the run and the volatility of the upside. But, uh, but hey, we'll see. If it starts moving $400 a day in both directions, then, yeah. Yeah. Traders just, as, they, as, you'd, trading. as you'd expect, right? Right. So the pound is at 130.81. And it looks like, uh, what are they saying, six months? Let's see. October delay. Theresa May accepted the European Union's offer to extend Brexit to October 31st and now must sell it to a skeptical members of Parliament and the Conservative Party uh, and a Conservative Party losing patience in her leadership. <laughs> and so part I heard her talking today, part of it is that uh, if they do make a deal, they don't have to wait until that day. Okay. Um, and so that was kind of one of the things she was touting in terms of May still aims to leave by May 22nd okay. to avoid the EU election. So that's okay. going to be, you're, you're, this isn't going away, um, which is, so that's part of what she's going to be um, talking about, uh, you know, as an yeah. ongoing, saying, you know, I know we don't want to push it that long, but guess what? We have the time. If we get it done, it's not like, okay, we leave on that day if we make a deal. Right. It's that we have until that day to make a deal. If we make a deal at any point, we can leave when the deal is yeah. done. Let's see what the island's prime minister is saying. So island finance minister, Pascal Donahue, said he thinks the next six months are real deal for, uh, the real deal for preparing for Brexit. In an interview in Ireland's News Talk Radio, he said he believes the U.K. will exit the U.K. at the end of October. Exit the EU, right. A, a, a position that puts him slightly at odds with prime minister who hasn't ruled out the possibility of further delays. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows. I mean, sure. You know, this is like a... No, ongoing. anybody who tells you they know what's going to happen. Yeah, this is a... That's a red flag if I've ever seen one. This is this is a long, drawn-out deal. So can I see what the yeah. con the conservative pro, how they are... Uh, yeah. 
Conservative Brexiteers unhappy. Yeah. So pro-Brexit conservative MPs have been setting out their dissatisfaction with the extension. A foretaste of the reception May will likely face in the House of Commons later. I don't think it's a good idea, and it's not delivering on the referendum results. Can't argue with that um, in terms of not delivering on the results of the re referendum. Here we are heading into Halloween, and there is some symbolism in that, I think, in that. Yeah. Um, let's see. He's not agitating for May to be replaced. Um, despite a recent attempt by his colleague. So Tory MP Maria Caulfield also expressed anger. There, this is, there is a ploy by those MPs who never wanted to leave the EU in the first place to kick the can down the road. She told Sky, adding that the divorce deal isn't likely to get more support at this stage of the negotiations. You have to be prepared to walk away. Yeah, I mean, can't argue with that one either, you know. Yes. If you wanted a Brexit and the people who didn't keep getting an extension, then right. yeah, that's got to be frustrating. No, totally. Um, to say the least, yeah. So let's go over and we take a look at the uh, FTSE. So you got a flat FTSE out here today. No, yeah, just, I mean, the FTSE had a run just as our markets had a run. Look at, I mean, oh, definitely, that's yeah. down there at, uh, we went from 65.36 yep. to 74 right now. Yeah, almost 15%. Yeah, put this back a little bit more. Look at that. That's it. I didn't realize that the FTSE was so high. It's, well, I guess our market is a lot higher than that, but it's pretty impressive. I mean, it's been in, it's been in a higher range since uh, 2016. It's so funny when you put these things back so far. Sure. I mean, that's 30 years. And you know what's amazing here, folks? So I got it on 30 years, but you can go back to, 2000, to 1999. And you're at 6,900. Isn't that interesting? You know. You really. You're at 65. Uh, yeah. You're at 69. Yeah. 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 No, I, I hear you. Right. You know. So Barely you, above it. Right. Right. Over right. 20 years. Right. Um, talking about almost 8 percent, 7 percent growth um, in 20 years. That's supposed yeah. to be your one-year growth, right? That you're right. hoping for in the market. And so you better hope that, and I suspect that, because that's like the Dow Industrials, that you're getting some dividends inside there. Do you know what I mean? Over okay. The, over the course of years. Oh, look at this one. This is. Larry Kudlow, folks, I got to get this quote. This is, this is like, you know what? Rates out will go up again, folks, okay? Uh, Kudlow says Trump's tax policy paying for themselves. That's not the one I want. We'll try that. Well, Kudlow just did, like, I guess Kudlow's on TV right now. Let's see. So he was just quoted yeah, I, I was, I was, as saying that he doesn't think the rates are ever going to go. go up. There you go. Last line. Oh, good. Okay. So there Last line. Yep. So... Uh, yeah, to cut to the chase, Kudlow said he doesn't see rates increasing again in his lifetime. I love how they add his age in there because it should have some context. I wonder how long he's planning on living. I mean, to be serious, as in, you know. Um, That's heavy, man. Well, and again, the man he works for, so he's got to report to the king, you know, Mr. Trump. So yeah. uh, he can't say much else on the record in terms of when he thinks rates are going up because we in all his, know how the lifetime. president feels. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. That is. Uh, so let's see what he has. I, I think that we already paid for a good chunk of it. Uh, Kudlow said... Uh, so he's talking about the tax cut. Yeah. Okay. Adding that the U.S. budget outlook is not as bad as many people say. Well, you know... I don't know how he gets that, I, but exactly. zero fi figures when the tax cut basically yeah. went all to the debt, all to buybacks, right. none of the yeah. um, quote-unquote trickle-down. So yeah. it's, sorry to bring you back to reality, yeah. Mr. Kudlow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Hey, it's one thing to argue that you don't care about the deficit and you just wanted the tax cuts because right. you just think that people are paying too high taxes. Right. But don't try and argue nonsensical, you know, right. garbage. Right. That, that 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 somehow that, it, it that is free. Right. Yeah. That, it, that it's already paid for. There's that no is free just, lunch, folks. It's a lie. Bottom line, there's no free lunch. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Um, Apple's still hanging tough there. Um, I wonder how it would be interesting to so see if Disney have oh, Disney. their event today, today, right? Yeah. Um, so Three their hours analyst this event. Um, talk about the toughest of the toughest audience in terms of the analysts, you know, um, the people who really know what's going on in terms of you can't get away with uh, lack of details when you're talking to analysts that are going to really want the, the meat of everything. And they're yeah. going to be talking about the Disney streaming service. I think right. they're going to call it Disney Plus, right? Is that what I heard? Okay. Something, I think. Um, yeah, they, they, this is going to get intriguing, folks, because you, you've had plenty of PR. Disney there. Plus, there you um, go. Yeah. What we haven't had is that we don't know how much it is. You don't know um, just what's 
Yeah. Basically inside it, um, and we'll find out. They've been teasing. Well, it for we like may a, find out. We'll see. Yeah, they've been teasing it for like a couple of years, right? Ever since they said they're not going to be offering their catalog to Netflix, Netflix. anymore. Um, and so I heard a number this morning. A guy, guy was on this morning, and he was saying that uh, when Disney pulled it off Netflix, that cost them 550 million. Okay. And revenue. N Netflix was was paying 550 million. Uh, it's not a lot of money if they're going to put you out of business, right? No, I do. I mean, that's that's the yeah. reason why. No, it is. Right. And that's that's. I was thinking that that's how they got sucked into it in terms of being fair. I mean, yeah. can you imagine if they just said no to Netflix and immediately just started plowing research and development and capital into saying we need an app? It can be rudimentary that needs to deliver our content tomorrow. Netflix really struggles. Yeah, I mean it's amazing, and now they have somebody that they're going to struggle to keep up with. We can talk about it a little bit more in the last segment. It'll be interesting. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up 41. NASDAQ is uh, flat. S&Ps are up one. And we get a lot happening. We get masters happening this we'll do morning. A sports update, man. Yeah. Wrap it up. Yeah, because it's a big, big happening in sports world. Masters weekend. Got to love it. So, Masters, they're already off there, teeing off. There's yeah. your leading board. We've got uh, Gentleman Tway. Not familiar. This is early, of course, but he's at minus two through eight. Harding, minus two as well. Grillo, minus two. Some of the tee times you were saying. Tiger Woods teeing off at, we got him 11.04 a.m. right as yeah. we wrap, wrap up. Rory McIlroy right behind him, I happen to see. Yeah. yeah. And you already got a bunch of guys, of course, going off already. And let's see how late they tee off till. 2 p.m., Jordan Spieth in the last, brook, uh, last group wow. and Phil Mickelson right there behind him. So that's going to be a big day. Oh, yeah. So is the is like is today the uh, qualification? Or how does that work? No, no. So golf tournaments in general okay. are four rounds. Okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. There is a cut after Thursday and Friday. Okay, it's all cool. the same tournament though. I see. So there's no qualifying. This okay. tour, if you if you destroy today, you right. know it's it's all a combined score. Thursday, right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So the tournament okay. starts today. You just got to be in the top um, 45 something ties. They, they okay. you know once you make it through Friday for to make the cut to make it to Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Uh, Lightning loss. Line. Last night. Oh boy, quite a, quite a night in hockey. You had the Lightning blowing a three three nothing lead. Right. They were up three nothing through the first period. They were, went into the third period up three one and lost four to three um, in regulation. You also had Pittsburgh losing to the Islanders uh, in overtime. And uh, I'm not sure if let's see the Bruins play tonight. They may play tonight. Um, where are we? No, that was last night. Where are we? Come on, the 11th. There they are, 7 p.m. tonight. The Bruins started off, I figured. Hit that gas. Where are we in natural gas? Let's All see. right. Natural gas. 270. 270. Stay right there, folks. We get fast market coming up next. I'm Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get them, folks.